Welcome to class one of servitization uh, for the uh, Master in Science and Engineering program. So class one, what's the objective? Um, I want to introduce the lecturers and the module structure, help you understand what you already know, because I think you know a lot more than you think you know, explain what the word servitization actually means and product service systems in terms of the context and learn why the term owner-operator is key to this module. First of all, watch a couple of videos. You've got the link there on uh, YouTube, and I really recommend that you go watch them. They're good. Um, the lecturers, who are we? Uh, Sean West and Jörg Meyerhofen. Uh, you've got our contact details there, so you can always get hold of us. Um, we've got a lot of experience in different areas around industrial firms and developing services. Me, uh, I studied in London um, and I've worked for a bunch of different firms, OEMs, non-OEMs, owner operators, and so I've seen a lot of this from different perspectives. Jörg, um, ETH graduate, um, and has worked for a bunch of different firms developing different services. First of all, I'm going to ask you what you want to learn, because to me that's kind of useful. Um, I want to know what you want to learn, so that by the end of it, hopefully, we make your learning objectives as well as what I actually want to teach you as well. And hopefully, by the end of it, you'll understand that the robots won't take over the world, but we actually need some people to interact with them and uh, deliver the services that these things need. Perhaps we become the slaves to the machine at that point. So the core module... Part one, industrial services, really the contextual issues. Designing services for value creation. And part three is trying to capture value. We've got a, different modules for each of the three parts. Designed to really follow the story through. And again, we're going to use service design a time and time again in our teaching. I think it's important there. So normal class structure, um, opening, case, I'm going to be very quick on the opening. I want to have some feedback from what you've done. I want to introduce the objectives for the class and uh, what we learned. So really, really important for that. Then we're going to have a case, um, minimal input, upload it to uh, Moodle. I want you to share uh, because I think we all learn by you guys sharing. And it actually reminds me that you do know quite a lot and it shows you how much you know. Then what we've got is we'll get one group to pitch their work, a little bit of theory, and then check out, make sure we've done everything, and then close for the week. Um, every week, each group or one of the groups has to provide some input um, of what they learned the week before. Why am I doing this? Um, I want to make sure that I know that you've learned the important things from the class. That's over and above the video and over and above what I think is important. And I also want you to tell me what you would have changed. Expectations. This is a class where you have to take part in. You can't fall asleep. Do the group work. Attend and take the group work and ask questions. Bug me. Final exams, open book. Um, I want to see you pass. I will give you the case two weeks before the exam so you've got a chance to read it, understand it, double check on the words that you're not sure about and learn. This is a book um, that you can get hold of. Um, it's the course book. Um, I happen to have edited, or I happen to have written two chapters. I know the authors very well. I know Tim, Marco, uh, Rogerio, and Ali. Uh, we've all worked together. Um, and I do want you to go through and create a book review. Um, and there is some overlap. Other books. Um, Tim Baines's book, Made to Serve, uh, Christian's book on service strategy and action is good. And also the value proposition design is actually a good book to help. So, as I said, I'm always going to ask you what you will always, what you already know. This is all about why you think companies want to shift into services. And what's the importance for a Swiss firm, the benefits of servitization. And then at around three o'clock, time to share. Input them. 
What the heck does servitization and what are product service systems? Why do we do services? Well, we need to do services because the margins on new products are relatively low. New machinery trade, um, we're looking at less than 5% margins. Um, that's really not very good. Um, we need to provide cash flow and service is one way to provide cash flow. It's a recurring revenue, machines need fixing, think about your car, and we make good money on it. Why do we make good money on it? We're kind of a monopoly. And this reflects on the new products, you're buying that in a competitive environment. Rolls-Royce has one of the best, most well-known examples of product service systems and servitization. Also, you could look at Hilti. Um, Hilti Tool uh, Services is an excellent example. Um, it's not marketing. It really embraces the ecosystem there. So don't think of it as marketing. Rolls-Royce is successful because of power by the hour. It changed the market. Product service systems. Basically, we're trying to put the product and the service together. Not just as an add-on, but really as a core part of it. You can't have A without B. That's really what we're trying to get to. And this goes back to 1988 and uh, was first described here in Switzerland at EMD. So I want you to watch the video from Aston on servitization and we use this model time and time again. Watch Andy Newley talking about servitization. Great video, gives you good input again. The old world, basically the asset broke, we discussed it and then we fixed it. Today with power by the hour, well, the asset breaks, well, I just have to get it back into operation as quickly as I can. Power by the hour means I take responsibility for it broken down. I've agreed what happens when it's broken and we get on with the job of operation, of being able to operate the machine. Um, this means I may lose some income uh, which I would have got, hey, it's broken. I can charge you a lot of money because I'm the only guy with that. So let's try not to break it because we actually make more money by not breaking it and by making it run. Completely different model to the old world. Initial service drivers, why did we change? Um, it's defensive from the customer side and the provider side and actually also offensive. We gain benefits from it. Um, customers, um, I want cost saving, reliability. I want to know what the ongoing costs are and keep that cost coming out. Offensively, um, it allows the customers to outsource stuff that isn't their core competency. So they focus on stuff which is really important for them. Providers, I'm trying to get improved viability in commercial aspects. Basically, I'm trying to lock out my competitors, pretty much. However, using it offensively, I get greater customer intimacy and adoption of um, new products and services into the market. So it has a good win-win on those, those aspects. Looking at the model, we've also got the consumption model. You bring it back for repair, or potentially I rent it, so I take responsibility for it, so I'm not trying to sell you and sell you and sell you a new, 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 new product. Um, I'm worrying about the end of life, how to bring it back to um, good service and the like. So really different. I don't want you to consume more than you need. And sometimes, think about bicycle share or car, car share. We make less of the products. Yeah, We make less bicycles. We make less cars. That's got to be clearly good for the environment. The supplier's responsibility here is much higher now. It's not sell, sell, sell. It's help, help, help. And we have a much closer relationship. That's why I like this model. It's a very simple model. It's very easy to see on a visual basis too. We have to integrate Industry 4 into it. Monitor, transmit, store, analyze, and respond. We have to make your business better. It's as simple as that. We have to make you do more with less. Or do something new with the same inputs. So this makes a great link into the Industry 4 story. We've got different types of services.
basic service, space services. Outcome is focused on the product provision, so we're trying to keep the product really running nicely. Demand here is self-generating. Hey, it's broken, I need it fixing. Hey, it needs a service, the service lights come on, just like my car. Intermediate services. Here we're now focused on the product condition. How do we keep the equipment in good condition? Advanced. I'm now trying to focus on the outcome. Paper use, long-term contracts, um, a cost out commitment. So we're changing the structure there completely. People. Focus is really on people. I need the right people to deliver the services, people who are relationship based but understand the technology, they're service centric and they're flexible. That's not as easy as it, as it seems, yeah? We need good service delivery systems. Again, that's not easy to do. It's a complex integration of practices and technologies. Really, really difficult to get right. And sometimes you just have to try some things. You have to prototype it to see how it works. Lessons. Some are positive, some are negative. That's quite interesting. There's no one journey to servitization. We basically mess some things up. But if you think about it, that's quite normal. We're developing a new business. We're expanding a business. Whether we do that with products or services, we always have problems initially. This guy is key to the module, the owner operator. Um, I don't like the word user because I like to make sure that every actor has got their specific view on the world. Think about the person that owns the equipment, think about the person that operates it, think about the person that maintains it. We have to get them to work together. Um, otherwise we don't get what we need. That's why I have the donkey picture. We can both behave really stupidly and get nothing or we win-win. That's really what we're trying to do. But to do this, the manufacturer has to think of the like an asset owner, not a traditional customer. Okay, closing. Hopefully you have an idea what's expected of you. Um, if not, we need to speak. You've learned something, and you've learned that you actually understand something already. You've understand what servitization is, long word, and you understand what a product service system is. And now you're always going to think about the asset owner operator first. So in class for the rest of the time, I'm not going to hear, do we think about the... The, 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 the manufacturer first, no. Always the asset owner operator. And that's really important because sometimes it goes through an intermediary before it's installed and used. Thanks very much.